So I recently came upon a quote, and it said, the greatest pleasure in life is doing something that people tell you that you can't do. And I realized I've kind of been living like that pretty much my entire life. And I remember a specific day just back in kindergarten. I was in my class, and I saw a bunch of boys playing with Legos, and I was like, ooh, I want to play with them. And they were building these really tall towers, and I started sitting down with them, and I was about to play, and they said, oh, no, girls, girls don't play Legos. And I, w I would like to say that I was a very mature kindergartner, and, and I knew that it was just society telling them that. But I wasn't, and that would be lying to you. So I tattled on them, and then I got my share of Legos. <laughs> and I built the tallest tower, and that's what matters. So, <laughs> so fast forward, and um, in eighth grade, um, I still liked Legos. And I was walking home from school one day, and I heard someone say, check out my website. And I thought, oh, wait, you can have one of those? So I went home, and I just started researching, how do you make a website? What, what do you have to know to make a website? And so I taught myself the coding side, the design side, the marketing side. I taught myself everything I could just to make one. And I loved it. I thought it was so fun. My friends were on my websites. They were all just silly things that I just liked to do. And in high school, I started taking the computer classes that were available to me. And I had no idea that girls didn't typically go into computer science. And then suddenly, when I took AP computer science, I, w I realized, wait a minute, I'm the only girl in the room. And my teacher pointed me out the first day and said, if you'll notice, we have a girl here. And suddenly, I was reading articles. I, w I just started searching computer science. And I was just like, there's not many girls in this. And I mean, if you think of a computer programmer, do you picture someone like me? Typically not. It's OK. So I was getting all this also from my peers, too. Just people saying, girls don't really do this. Girls don't really do this. And for some reason, I was just like, I'm going to do it anyway. Let's <laughs> prove them wrong. So I decided I was going to major in computer science at Iowa State University. So I was super excited about that. I had no idea who the people were at Iowa State. I had never been to Iowa before. I just thought it sounded like a really awesome place, and so I went for it. And I um, had a blast. I joined as many clubs as I possibly could just so I could get to know people. I talked with my academic advisor all the time to see which classes should I take, what should I be doing. She said, oh, you should get a job on campus if you can. And so um, I went to the career fair, and I had my resume just full of clubs because that's all I had under my belt so far. And I was able to get an internship with General Mills and with Priority 5. Now, Priority 5 was a small startup in the ISU Research Park, and I was just doing that part time. Um, that's me. And then I also went to General Mills, which was in Minneapolis. That's next summer. And throughout the summer, I just was exploring. And I was just trying different technologies. I was doing as much as I could with my projects, just trying to see what part of computer science do I like the most. And I, I really just found, man, I like web development. I started in eighth grade, and I really think that this is what I want to stick with. So I, I kept messing with it, and I just enjoyed the summer overall. And so my sophomore year, I thought, OK, I'm going to start getting a bit more involved on campus. I started getting some leadership positions here and there. And um, I also decided I was going to study abroad, which I was really excited about. And um, so I studied abroad, finished my Spanish minor while I was out there, and I interned for the National Center for Women in IT when I was there. Now, I won an award with them for my aspirations in computing. And it was just telling me, hey, good job. You like computers. Here's a trophy. And, that's the, and I never really thought about that when I won the award. But then I started getting more involved with them. So I interned for them while I was studying abroad just remotely. And um, I went to the Grace Hopper Conference for Women in Computing just so I could start networking a bit. But I didn't really know what I was doing. But I did get an interview and an internship with Microsoft that next summer. And so that's what I did right after my semester in Spain. This was my team. We were the dream team. And um, we worked on Bing ads. And we were putting together just this whole ads platform on mobile. And I was getting to use my web development skills and getting really into that. And then I also discovered hackathons while I was there. Now, hackathons, if you don't know what those are, those are you're given a certain amount of time to just make something. And you can make anything. Sometimes they're hardware oriented. Sometimes it's just like make a mobile website or just make an app. You can make anything you want. Sometimes there's a theme, sometimes they're not, within that specific time. And I loved them. It's a nice competitive way to kind of exercise your creativity as fast as you can and just make something that 
basically works. I ended up winning the hackathon for the entire online services division and got to present it to the president of the division. And I just thought, okay, hackathons. This is what I want to do. I love this. So I knew that I wanted to continue with hackathons. Now, when I came back into my junior year, I was just like, okay, I'm going to continue staying more involved. I decided to start leading the computer science learning community, and I was going to be teaching younger students basic Java, just stuff to help with classes. So that way, we could kind of continue to help them out. I could continue to remember the basics as I was going on. And I also went to the Grace Hopper Conference again. Now, at the Grace Hopper Conference, um, there's a career fair, there's lots of sessions, and I decided, okay, I want to try something super different. I want to get an internship with a company in Silicon Valley. And so I got an internship with Intuit, and they make TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint.com, a bunch of financial software. And so I got the internship while I was there. I was nervous, and I thought, okay, I'm going to go to Silicon Valley, which is the tech hub. But before that school year was over, um, my sister, first of all, she came into computer science at Iowa State, and she's there now too. And um, we both were invited through NCWIT to go to the White House to share our experiences as women in computing, um, as students in computing. And so we talked about our experiences. We got to meet a lot of people. I met a bunch of people that were from Silicon Valley. So I was able to make those connections so I could bring them with me to that summer. So after this experience, I was, I was getting excited. Silicon Valley was going to be cool. I was going to make it my summer of networking. I was going to meet as many people as I possibly could. And that's exactly what I did. So when I made it to Intuit, I started doing hackathons out the wazoo. Almost every weekend, I was just <laughs> meeting people, going to hackathons, um, speaking at conferences, doing as much as I could. Um, I went to the NCWIT conference in Tucson, Arizona, and I spoke with them there, and I got to meet representatives from Google and Apple and all kinds of stuff. And there was one hackathon, the AT&T Women's Mobile Hackathon, that sticks out to me, because not only did we build a fun little mobile app, but I got to meet this one woman named Kelly Hoey. Now, she's in charge of Women Innovate Mobile, and I didn't think she would be that significant when I first met her, but then I found out she had also been invited to this unique hackathon that I'd just recently been invited to. And it was the British Airways Ungrounded Hackathon. Now this hackathon was one that had never been tried before, and it was a hackathon on a plane, and it was a flight from San Francisco to London. And we had to <laughs> come up with something on this flight on, without any Wi-Fi or anything, just to be able to bridge the gap in STEM, they said, the bridge the gap in science, tech, engineering, and math. So Kelly was going to be on my team, and we built Advisor. Advisor is an online community to advocate, accelerate, and advise women in STEM. So we wanted to be able to advise them. So advising is, involves mentoring. It involves getting connections with people and giving advice to younger people and getting advice from older people that would be able to help you out. Um, advocating. You're building a community around something. If you want to stay in a particular field, you want to be able to have some people with you, don't you think? So we wanted to actually build out this community and have some good people in there to be able to encourage you in there. And then accelerate. To accelerate, you need to give people money. So companies would be able to sponsor people through um, through our platform, and people would be able to apply for scholarships through it. And by having all three of these components together, we're able to build out a huge community of women in STEM because the retention rate wasn't that great. By the time I was at this hackathon, my freshman year, I knew a lot of girls in computer science. By the time I was at this hackathon, there were four left in my graduating class. So we need the retention. And these three factors, we decided, would be the best way to do so. We ended up winning the hackathon, which was very exciting. And we presented it in London at the Decide Now Act Summit, the G8 Innovation Conference. We went to Parliament. We got to tour the House of Lords. It was very exciting. So by the time we went, I came back to Intuit, I was just like, man, I'm going to utilize these connections and meet as many people as I could. And that's what I did. So I met Mark Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg, and Craig Newmark of Craigslist, and a bunch of other people. I kept meeting as many people as I could, and I just thought, these people, I'm going to help them do better, and they're going to help me do better, and we're going to all build something great at some point. And it was a very exciting summer. So I went back to Iowa State again after all of this, and real life was starting to hit me. I'm going to have to get a job. So... <laughs> so I started interviewing right away. I wanted to get it done so that way I could just relax for the rest of the senior year if I could. So I decided, well, I don't have to relax too much. So I interviewed 
almost every single weekend, and I also went to several hackathons. I spent no weekends in September on campus. And um, there was one hackathon in particular that was especially exciting, Penn Apps, which is the Penn State Hackathon. And there were thousands of students there building all kinds of amazing applications. And there's a, a bunch of companies there, and one of those companies was Venmo. And Venmo is a startup in New York, and it's an application that helps you pay your friends. So if we're going to the movies, one person can buy all the tickets. We can pay them back through Venmo. It's an easy replacement for cash. And um, one of the people at Venmo I recognized, and it turned out I actually had met him this past summer. He was the root college roommate of one of the people that I had met. It was just a big networking um, coincidence. And he introduced me to the founder of the company, and by the end of the hackathon, I had a job interview. And so I was especially excited about that because the job interview was the day before another event that I was going to be at. Now, Venmo's in New York, and so is the United Nations. I wasn't invited to present our idea, advise her to the United Nations and the International Telecommunications Union to try to push it forward and make it a global endeavor to get more women in STEM. So I went to New York. I interviewed with the company all day, I went to a Broadway show, and then we presented to the ITU and to the UN, and we got backing for our project, and that day I got a job offer. It was a good day. <laughs> and so, um, after a little bit of debate, I decided, okay, you know what, Venmo, it sounds really good, I have nine other job offers, but I think, I think Venmo sounds pretty exciting, it's something brand new. And so, on Halloween, I accepted Venmo. And I was super excited about that. And it's a job offer that I'm excited about because it combines two things that I really like. The first part is a front-end engineer. And I'm going to be working on the look and feel of the website and the application and just making everything really cool looking and easy for the user. And then the second part is developer evangelist. And that basically means I get to plan hackathons and speak at conferences whenever I want. So I'm super excited about combining both of those. And um, so really, my college experience has been an adventure for both my sister and I. This is us on the Iowa State homepage right now. And um, so what the heck does this all mean for you? I, I just wanted to let you know that anybody can do all kinds of amazing things if you find something you're passionate about. So my first summer, it was the summer of exploration. Find something that you're passionate about, even if it's something as simple as Legos. What, what is something general about that? I liked making things. What, and I like computers. What, what could I do that I could combine those two and try to explore that? Once you explore that, it's like my second summer at Microsoft. Get technical with it. Try learning the details of what exactly you like about that passionate thing and really go for it. And then network. That's what, that was this past summer. Meet as many people as you can who have similar passions and you can help each other to find exactly what you want. And eventually, you'll all be able to figure out exactly what you want to do, and no matter your age, you'll be able to be successful at it. Thank you. <laughs>